If you've been a part of the Edsworld community for any amount of time, you've probably realised there's more to this show than it may first appear. Though the main goal of Edsworld was always comedy, the team has been able to do so much more with the show, from huge multi-episode story arcs to questions that have been straight up left unanswered. Though I've done my fair share of speculation in the past, this show is being discussed all over the internet, and some of the theories that I've read are truly mind-blowing. Here are two theories that I came across when browsing the web. They aren't my own, but I thought I could shed light on them and expand them in my own way. I'll leave a link to each of these in the description below. If all goes well, then I might do more theory showcases like this in the future. I'm not going to say that these 100% correct, that's why they're called theories, but I do think it's fun to look at these episodes in a new and interesting way. Also, if you don't know anything about Red Lead or the Red Army, then have a read of this. It's quite important to understanding both of these. This first theory is one that was brought to my attention in the comment section of one of my own videos, but I've found variations of this theory all over the internet. The earliest example of this theory I could find was actually under a Reddit thread on the end of part 1 back when it was first released. And it attempts to answer the question, why did Tord become so evil? When you go back to the original episodes, it was obvious that Tord was always more violent than the others, but there was never anything about Tord which was inherently evil. What made him decide to join the Red Army in the first place other than perhaps a mild obsession with firearms? Well, what if the Tord we see in the end is one of the clones from Spares who went rogue? Think back to that episode. There are several reject clones who did not match the thinking and personality of the original four, including a Tord who would solve everything with guns. Though they seemed normal on the outside, there were oftentimes defects that separated them from their original versions. Though you could say that they were all killed in the final battle, one of the Mac clones was actually able to survive, and the gang could not tell which one was which. Also, there were four million of them! So it's entirely possible that at least one or two of them survived. Some versions of this theory also note that Tord acts differently in the end, acting cold-heartedly and emotionless when he first meets Ed. Tord also has this strange bandage on his chin, which doesn't in the original design. This may be also a hint that he was not who he seemed. I have one final thing to add to this theory. I have not been keeping up with the beginning of the Friend comic strip, so this may be entirely incorrect and have no grounding whatsoever, but imagine if this came into the comic as a twist ending. If the real Tord came back in the last few editions and revealed that Red Leader was a clone the entire time, then he could lead a rebellion against the Red Army or something, I, I think it would be pretty cool. At the very least, this theory gives us a new fun way to look at these two fantastic episodes. This second theory is my take on an amino post I saw a while back from a user called Dreamtime, and it explains how the Red Army were able to take over the world. If you watch the Snoga, you'll notice that the radioactive material that Paul and Patrick are carrying has the ability to turn people into zombies. The chemical spill is actually implied to be the catalyst for the episode Funded, but then in Funded, after the incident, we see the Red Army fighting off the zombies, but the news refers to them as vigilantes. Armed vigilantes are attempting to control the city. As in heroes, but this makes no sense. Paul, Patrick and Tord were the ones who were carrying this toxic waste to begin with. If anything, the plan was to create zombies, but now they were attempting to control them? Why would the news think that these guys were heroes? Unless that's what they wanted them to think. Maybe the plan all along was to start a zombie apocalypse and pretend to be the ones to save the day. If they were able to control the outbreak in such a way that they could bring a peaceful end to it, then they would be the saviours of the world, the heroes of the moment creating a problem and then selling the solution. That's the Apple way of doing things, and they're doing pretty well if you ask me. And once the Red Army are crowned as heroes, they could use their influence and respect to rise to a position of power. This was also the plan of Syndrome in The Incredibles, creating that giant robot octopus thing and then pretending to be a hero so that everyone liked him. Now, you may ask what the Red Army has that the regular army doesn't, and the answer to that is that the Red Army have a giant robot.
So yeah, the Red Army's plan all along might have been to take over the world by first gaining the trust of the masses and then pretending to save the world from zombies. Then again, there are other things that the Red Army could beat in order to win trust. Something bigger than a whole load of zombies. Say, for example, a monster. Perhaps even a demon monster. Makes you think, doesn't it? Thank you.